بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد ناخذ باذن الله تعالى صفه وضوء النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لكن قبل ان نبدا اريد ان نعرف شروط الوضوء، من يذكر لي شروط الوضوء؟ سو so, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام والسلام على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. So in this lesson now we're going to go through the way of performing wudu, ablution. And before we do this, we need to know what are the conditions of performing wudu. نعم. So therefore who can mention the conditions of performing wudu, ablution? من يعرف؟ شروط الوضوء. نعم الإسلام نمبر وان الإسلام والعقل sound intellect والتمييز التمييز the, the age whereby the child can distinguish والنية the intention واستسحاب النية إلى أن تتم الطهارة and making sure that that intention that you have for the ablution is continuous up until you finish the ablution نعم يعني لا ينوي قطع الوضوء في وسط الوضوء. So لا بد أن تكون النية من أول الوضوء إلى آخره. So for for example, a person who is performing wudu, the ablution, he doesn't stop his intention in the middle of performing wudu. Rather, he has that intention, keeps it with him, with every single washing of each limb. وكذلك. And also, انقطاع موجب الوضوء. يعني في أشياء توجب الوضوء. مثال خروج الريح فهل يصح التوضا وهو يخرج منه ريح؟ And also from the conditions is that that those things which break a person's wudu they have to stop. So for example, from one of the things which invalidates a person's wudu is when wind is passed. So therefore, can a person make wudu whilst he's passing wind? لا يصح. No, it's not correct. ينتهي من هذا خارج ثم بعد هذا يتوضا. So first a person finishes from that which invalidates the prayer and then he makes wudu. Uh, sorry. So firstly a person finishes from that which invalidates the wudu, the ablution, and then he starts making ablution. مثال الآن. So an example of this is. إذا كان مثلا هو في دورة المياه وهو يبول مثلا هل يصح التوضا وهو يبول؟ So for example a person let's say he is urinating you know in the toilet. Is it permissible for him to make wudu, to make ablution while he's urinating? لا. No. تغل. حتى قطع هذا البوب. No, he has to wait until he has finished urinating and then start making wudu. ثم بعد هذا أيضا. And then after this also. من شروط الوضوء الاستنجاء أو الاستجماع قبله. And also from the conditions, from the شروط, the conditions of wudu ablution is making استنجاء أو استجماع before wudu. الاستنجاء. والاستجماع والاستنجاء استعمال الماء والاستجماع استعمال المناديل أو الحجارة. So the meaning of استنجاء is using water to clean your private parts and that is done before making wudu. And the meaning of استجماع is to use stones or toilet paper, toilet roll, type toilet paper before uh, making wudu to clean your private parts. So this is from the conditions of wudu. هل يجب الاستنجاء والاستجماع قبل الوضوء يعني أراد أن يتوضع الآن هل يجب عليه قبل أن يتوضع أن يستنجى ويستجمر؟ So is it an obligation upon a person to make استنجاء أو استجماع meaning to wash his private parts with water or with uh, with toilet paper before he makes wudu meaning somebody wants to make wudu do we say that you have to first go and make استنجاء استجمار and then make wudu? لا. No. إلا إذا كان هذا الموجب للوضوء موجب للاستنجاء والاستجمار كالبول أو الغائط. No, we don't say it's an obligation except if he has just urinated or if he's relieved himself. خروج الريح وأكل لحم الجزور مثلا. The passing of wind, the eating of the meat of the camel even. نعم لا يوجب الاستنجاء والاستجمار. So for example, the passing of the wind or eating camel meat, 
it doesn't necessitate, it doesn't obligate a person to perform istinja or istijmal even though it breaks the wudu. نعم كذلك الإزالة من شروط الوضوء إزالة ما يمنع وصول الماء إلى البشرة. So for another or the other condition of wudu of ablution is that you remove anything which prevents the water from reaching your skin, from touching your skin. يعني مثال الآن هو يعمل في طلاء الجدران. So for example, there's a person who is decorating walls. وعلى أحد أعضاء الوضوء شيء من هذا الطلاء يمنع من وصول الماء إلى البشر. الطلاء يعني الدهان. الدهان هذا. So for example, a person is painting the wall, and on his skin is some paint, and if he was to allow water to run over it. The water it wouldn't touch his skin because of the paint. So the person has to first remove his the paint off his arm, which would prevent the water reaching his arm and then make wudu. أو عجين يعني العجين أحيانا عندما يعجن الخبز. Or for example, you have a person who's baking bread and he has some dough on his hand, and that dough would normally prevent water reaching his skin. So you have to remove the dough first and then make wudu. أو النساء يعني أضعنا على الأظافر شيء يسمى عندنا بالمناكير. ما أعرف إيش يسمى عندنا. So, nail polish. So, for example, women who place nail polish on their nails, and this prevents water reaching the nails. Therefore, she has to remove the nail polish first, and then make wudu. نعم لأن هذا يمنع وصول الماء إلى البشر. Because this prevents water touching or reaching the skin. وكذلك من شروط الوضوء طهورية الماء وإباحته. And also, from the conditions of the wudu. Is that the water you're using has to be both pure and permissible. نعم. فلو وجد ما نجس هل يتوضع به؟ So for example, if a person finds water which is impure, نجس, is it permissible for him to make wudu with it? أو هل يسرق ماء حتى يتوضع؟ Or is it permissible for a person to go steal water and then make wudu with it? لا. No. إذن لا بد أن يأتي بالشروط أولا. Therefore, before a person makes before a person makes wudu ablution. He has to make sure all these conditions are met. For all the wudu, six. As for the obligations of ablution, then there are six. غسل الوجه مع المضمضة والاستنشاق. Number one, washing the face along with rinsing the mouth and the nose. اليدين مع المرفقين. And then washing the hands up until and including the elbows. ومسح الرأس مع الأذنين. And wiping over your head, including your ears. وغسل الرجلين مع الكعبين. And washing the two feet, including the ankles. كذلك التغطيب والموالاة. التغطيب أن يرتب على ما رتب الله سبحانه وتعالى. And also the fifth condition is that you do these actions in sequential order, just as Allah سبحانه وتعالى has mentioned. And mawalat, the sixth condition. Mawalat is al-mutabaa bi Allah yafsil bayn al-ghurf wal-ladi alih bi fasil tawi. And then the sixth condition is that when you're performing wudu, when you're performing ablution, and you're washing the various limbs, that they're done one after the other immediately, and there's no long break between washing one limb to the other limb. يعني وهو يتوضع الآن وبعد أن غسل الوجه دق الجوار. وأخذ يتكلم حتى جف الوجه ثم أراد أن يكمل هذا الوضوء نقول لا لأنه لم تتحقق الموالاة هنا. So for example a person is performing wudu, he washes his face and then his mobile rings. So he answers the mobile phone and he starts talking for a long time up until his face now has become dry from the water and then puts the phone down and he wants to carry on making wudu. This isn't correct. So he has to start from the beginning. Why? Because the condition of mawalat, doing it continuously, hasn't been fulfilled. Uh, Those things which invalidate a person's ablution. What are the things, what are the matters which invalidate a person's ablution? Who knows? Those things or anything which comes out from القبل أو الدور. Anything which comes out from a person's private parts, from the front or the back, anything. Bowel, urine, غائط, feces, money, semen, or money, or the other similar discharge, the other type of discharge. Or wadi. Okay. Or rih, or wind, passing of wind. Or didan, dud. Or anything, any anything like any kind of bacteria, something that comes out. Or hasa. Or any type of stone or anything. Or hair or nipples. 
all the blood that women suffer from in terms of either pregnancy, postnatal bleeding, <laughs> or, <laughs> or periodic ble bleeding, or normal blood. <laughs> so everything which comes out or is discharged from a person's private parts, the front or the back, anything at all, it breaks the wobble. <laughs> The second matter which invalidates the prayer. So the second condition is anything which necessitates a person losing his intellect, even temporarily. For example, sleeping. When a person is sleeping, he's not in the conscious state. Or drugs, for example, alcohol, um, from like general anesthetics. You know, people use anything which would cause a person to lose his consciousness, even temporarily, then this breaks a person's wudu. So therefore, is sleep, um, something which invalidates a person's wudu. Sheikh bin Adhemi rahmallahu ta'ala yaqul anna al-nawm ghayr naqad al-wudu lakin huwa madhanna li khuruj al-reem. Sheikh bin Adhemi rahmallahu he said that sleeping in itself, sleep in itself does not break a person's wudu. However, when a person sleeps, there's a strong possibility that maybe he's broken his wudu, wudu for example, through passing wind. And therefore, a person, uh, therefore, sleep invalidates the a person's ablution. So, if, for example, somebody is overcome by some slumber, is his wudu, his ablution, correct or not? We look. If this person, even though this type of slumber, very light sleep has overtaken him, if he can feel that which is around him and he knows what he, you know, the state that he's in, then his wudu is okay. If, however, he loses that consciousness or that feeling temporarily, then his wudu is invalid. <coughs> and after this, are the things which invalidate a person's wudu. Sheikh Ibn Baz he mentions in the important lessons of this book, Durus al Muhimma. Al Kharij al Fahsh wa hada yani fi khilaf. Ida kan yakhruj al Bawl wal Ghaid min ghayr al Makhraj al Mu'tad wa hu Bawl al Ghaid fa hu naqib. So, kan yakul yani amjub yakhruj minhu al Bawl al Ghaid. Nams. Limarad. Nadi Ibn Sheikh Ibn Baz. Nams. Nams. So Sheikh Ibn Baz Rahimullah mentions that any impurity which leaves the body even though it might not be from the frontal passage or the back passage, the private parts. Then this also breaks the wudu. For example, some people they have, um, they have what they call a pouch, you know, here somewhere. Because they're not able to <coughs> urinate from the place that they urinate from. And therefore, when a person urinates, even if it's from a bag up here, then then this breaks the wudu. Also, eating the meat of camel. Uh, and also when and also when a person he leaves Islam, then this leaving Islam it invites all the actions including wudu. As for a person touching his private part, Sheikh he said that his opinion was that a person or a person touching his private part, this doesn't break a person's wudu. It invalidates a person's wudu. However, it's recommended for him to repeat his wudu. Okay, so now we start with the practical implementation of the wudu of the ablution. Somebody speaks in Arabic. Tell me, 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 T
طيب الان عندنا اشكال وهذا من الشيطان وهو التبذير في استعمال الماء So now we have a common problem and this is from shaitan and that is being wasteful of water and this is from shaitan israf fi istimal al ma i waste being wasteful in in uh, performing ablution and using water naam fa andama yaftah al an hadha al manfadh alladhi yakhruj minhu al ma taj'alu ala aqal daraja naam so the shaykh saying that when you for example open the tap from which water exits Then have it at the lowest level that's possible. أتبى شروط الوضوء. So now the brother is fulfilled the conditions of wudu. الإسلام والعقل والتمييز والنية. الإسلام, intellect. He's able to see at the age where he can distinguish. He has the intention that this is evolution. وما ذكرنا. And the other conditions that we have mentioned. الآن يبدأ بالبسمة. He begins by saying بسم الله. بسم الله. Saying بسم الله. نعم. ثم بعد هذا يغسل الكفين الكفين يغسل الكفين قبل البدء في الوضوء. So now before beginning his wudu, he washes his hands. إلى 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 الرسم 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 هذا مفصل إذا مفصل الكف. نعم. So a person before he makes the wudu, he washes his hands up to his wrist. To his bone here. فغسل الكفين قبل البدء في الوضوء من المستحبات سنة. So therefore, washing the hands before making wudu is from the مستحبات meaning is from the recommended act. إلا في نوم الليل إذا استيقظ لصلاة الفجر أو إلى قيام الليل يجب عليه غسل الكفين ثلاث مرات قبل إدخالهما في الإناء. And the only exception is if a person wakes up from sleeping at night, meaning deep sleep, then it's obligatory, it's wajib, it's an obligation upon him to wash his hands three times before he enters them into the utensil. However, if he doesn't wash his hands three times, then his wudu is correct. But if he knows of the ruling and he doesn't do this on purpose, then he's sinful. So he mentions the name of Allah by saying Bismillah. And of course, before this, he comes with the conditions of ablution, including the intention. He washes his hands to his wrists three times, or even once. And then after this, he takes a handful of water with his right hand. يتمغمغ بأن يدخل الماء في فيه. and then he places the water into his mouth and rinses his mouth. وكذلك في من خري. and at the same time he rinses his nostrils. ثم بعد هذا يمج الماء من فيه ويستنثر بيده اليسرى بأن أخرج الماء من من خري. and then after this after he's entered his mouth into his nose and is after he's entered the water. In his mouth and his nose, he then rinses his mouth and he spits out the water and he rinses the, the water from his nose with his left hand until the water's come out. And that is with one handful. That's done all at one time. So this is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You send me. He says Bismillah. He mentions the name of Allah. ثم يأخذ حفنة من ماء بيده اليمنى. Then he takes one handful of water with his right hand. يتمغمغ ويستنشق ويستنثر بيده اليسرى. And he rinses his mouth and his nostril, and then he exits the water with his left hand from his from his nose. مرة أخرى. يأخذ حفنة من ماء يتمغمغ. So another time, he takes a handful of water with his right hand, and he places it in his mouth and his nostrils, his nose, and then he blows it out and spits out the water. And he uses his left hand when he's. نعم. ثم بعد هذا يغسل الوجه. And then after this he washes his face. فما هو حد الوجه؟ So 
So therefore, what are the limits of the face? Uh, what is the face? What comes under being the face? من منبت الشعر المعتاد إلى أسفل الذق طولا. So من منبت الشعر المعتاد إلى أسفل الذق طولا. So ومن شحمة الأذن إلى شحمة الأذن عرضا. So in terms of the length, then from the top of the head where hair normally grows, which is normal. أو من منحنى الجبهة هنا من منحنى عندما تنحني الجبهة. Now, oh, from the top of his forehead, uh, up until the bottom of his chin. So this is in terms of the length of his face. From where hair normally grows, the top of the forehead to the bottom of his chin in terms of length, and then from ear to ear in terms of width. Now, هل يجب عليه أن يخلل اللحية يعني يدخل الماء بين شعر اللحية أو يأخذ حفنة من ماء هكذا ويخلل ما بين الشعر. So, is it obligatory for a person to separate each strand of hair with water and make sure like hair reaches and separates every single water? Or that, for example, a person takes a handful of water and makes sure they enter into all of his beard? This, the ruling of this goes back to the type of beard he has, i.e. the amount of hair. If a person has a beard which is very, very light, أسفل من اللحية كما في لحية الأخ نعم كما في لحية الأخ نعم. يرى الخد الآن أسفل من اللحية لأن اللحية خفيفة فالتخليل في حق هذا واجب ولا بد So if a person's beard is very light in the sense that you can see the cheeks of a person through his beard so the hairs of his beard are a very little number then if this is the type of beard then it's an obligation for a person to make sure he separates the strands, the strands of his hair and his beard and he washes them. And if however, and if, however if however the beard is heavy so that you can't see the skin which is under the beard then separating the strands of the beard is something which is recommended but it's not obligation. Yes, Sheikh? And the layer of the hair نعم ثم بعد هذا يعني بعد أن يغسل يغسل الآن الوجه ومسترسل من اللحية لأنه يحصل بما استرسل من اللحية المواجهة نعم so now he's washing his face and including in this is the beard and whatever is dropping from the beard that he washes this as well or he rinses it نعم يغسل meaning he places his wet hands over his beard as well نعم ثم بعد هذا then after this يغسل اليد اليمنى he washes his right arm فما هو حد اليد so therefore what is the limit of being the arm the right arm what is the limit من أطراف الأصابع starting from the tips of the fingers إلى أن يشرع في العضد يعني حتى يستوعب المرفقين من أطراف الأصابع لا يكفي غسل الكفين في في أول وضوء غسل الكفين في أول وضوء سنة وهنا فرض من فروض الوضوء أن يغسل من أطراف الأصابع حتى يشرع في العضد مع المرفقين أي يعني يستوعب المرفقين نعم So now the limits of the arm is to start from the fingertips he starts from the fingertips and washes it all the way up until some of the elbows he's, he's washed the elbow as well so the elbows included being washing the chef mentioned that when we spoke about washing the hands before the wudu, then this is a recommended act. However, in the wudu, it's not enough for a person to start from his palm. No, he starts from his fingertips, and this is the obligation. From the fingertips all the way to and including the elbow. So does a person even begin to wash some of his upper arm? No, he doesn't wash his upper arm. يبدأ باليمنى. so he starts with his right hand. ثم اليسرى. and then his left hand. ما هو الفرق بين غسل العضو ومسح العضو؟ so what is the difference between washing the limb or running wet hands over the limb؟ سوف يأتي معنا إنه يمسح الرأس ولا يغسل الرأس. because 
we're going to come to the fact that he does mask over the head, meaning he gets wet hands and he runs them over the head, not he doesn't wash it. <coughs> so the meaning of washing a limb is that after he's placed water over it, there's droplets of water which are dropping. <coughs> and if the, the the limb is wet but there's no uh, droplets which are dropping in this isn't washing this is just muscle wiping over with wetness so now we're going the next thing that he does is he he wipes his and he runs his wet hands over his head so he begins with the the top or the beginning of his head and goes all the way to the back and then he brings his hands back to the front and he enters both of his wet uh, index fingers in the inside of his ears and as for the thumbs then he uses them to wipe the outside of the ears and this is mask meaning using wet hands and running them over the head and not غسل, not washing so droplets of water, they're not now dropping from, from there, it's just wet hands I'm using. Now, Should a person wipe his neck? La. No. Does a person take new water for his ears? La. No. And now the next thing that he does is washes his right foot and then his left foot. If a person is wearing either khufain, which are the leather ankle socks that go and include your ankle, or normal socks, fabric socks, then the sunnah of the Prophet is that he does musk, meaning he runs his right hands over the sock or over the leather socks. And then he doesn't take them off. But that is with the conditions of wiping over the hoof or the jaw of the socks or the leather socks. The first condition So the first condition is that when he wore the socks or when he wore the hoof, the leather socks that cover the ankles, that he only wore them after performing a full ablution, meaning he performed all of his wudu and he washed his feet and then he put his socks on or he put the khuf on the leather socks. That's the first condition. And second thing is that And then the second condition is that the socks that he is wearing or the khuf, the leather socks he is wearing that they themselves are clean and pure. They're not najis, they're not impure. They're not being or something. And that they cover most of the foot. They cover most of the name. So for example, some people they wear those, you know, those ankle socks or the sports socks. So some people they wear ankle socks or sports socks that uncover some of the ankle. Is it therefore correct? So is it correct for a person to pray? Uh, is it correct for a person to perform musk, wipe over socks which cover the ankle? Yes, if it covers the ankle. And then the last condition is that wiping over the socks or the leather socks, the fabric socks or the leather socks is done only in the minor impurity, not the major impurity. Because the major impurity, i.e. Janaba, this obligates a full ghusl. And then the final condition is that the musk the wiping over the leather socks or the fabric socks is done within the regulated time period. And that is a day and a night for a person who is resident. I 24 hours. And as for the person who is traveling, then three days and nights. 72 hours. So let's say now this brother, he has fulfilled the conditions of wearing 
سوكس لا فابريك سوكس على طهارة كاملة بين غسل رجليه مثلا مع صلاة المغرب. So for example at the time of uh, the prayer of Maghrib he performed his full wudu including washing his feet and then he wore his socks. طاهرة and the socks were both pure. ساتر الغالب العضو and it covers most of the foot. وهذا في الحدث الأصغر. And he's only broken his wudu due to the minor impurity, not the major impurity. وفي الوقت لأنه لم يمضي على المسح شيء أصغر. And within the time, and within the time period, meaning within those 24 hours. فما كيف يمسح؟ So then, how does he wipe over his sock? يمسح بأن يمسح على اليمنى واليسرى في وقت واحد على الظاهر فقط دون الباطن. So he wets his hands. And then he wipes over فقط. his right foot with his right hand and his left foot with his left hand at the same time and only on, on the top of the foot, not the bottom, just the top. نعم. And that's without wiping over his shin, the shin bone. أو يمسح أولاً على اليمنى باليمنى ثم على اليسرى باليسرى. هذا يجوز. نعم. Or it's permissible for him to wipe over his right foot first with his right hand and then after the left foot with his left hand. وإذا كان لبس الجوربان على غير طهارة. أن ليس if he had worn the socks but he wasn't on purity. فماذا يصنع؟ يغسل. So what should he do? Then he takes his socks off and he and he washes them. يغسل الرجلين إلى الكعبين. He washes his feet up until and including his ankles. يعني استوعب الكعبين. Meaning includes that he washes his ankle as well. هل يغسل الساق؟ Does he wash his shin? لا. No. يخلل بين أصابع الرجلين بخنصري. and he separates between the toes of his feet with his small finger. يعني يتحقق من وصول الماء ما بين الأصابع لأنه في الغالب أصابع الرجلين متلاصقة. meaning that he has to make sure that water reaches between his toes as well. خلنا. خنصر خنصر. أي نعم. it's using his small finger. نعم خلاص هيك خلاص خلاص طيب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ويل للأعقاب من النار He نعم. said, "Woe or a threat of punishment let be upon the ankle نعم. from the fire." Because most most often <coughs> water doesn't cover it. We're talking about the heel, نعم, 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 نعم. not the ankle. Yeah. Yes, sorry, as the brother mentioned, the heel, not the ankle, the heel. Yes. 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 يقول الدعاء الوارد عن النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام. So after he has finished washing his right foot and his left foot, then he says the supplication which was read from the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. هل وضع هذا الأمر صحيح أو باطل؟ So now the conclusion of this brother is it correct, accepted, or is it incorrect and invalid? من يقول لي؟ Who will who will say? هل وضع هذا الأمر صحيح أم باطل؟ Is the conclusion of this brother now is it correct or incorrect? نعم. باطل لماذا؟ طيب اعتبر انه غسل اليمنى ثم غسل اليسرى هل هو ضرر صحيح ام باطل؟ نعم صحيح 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 فرض من فروض الوضوء وهو الموالاة لأنه كان يفصل فصل يسير الآن الوجه قد جف حتى اليدين قد جفت هذا أمر الأمر الثاني خلل عند الأخ ما هو إذا نوى الآن الوضوء فوضوءه صحيح وإن نوى التعليم فقط فوضوءه باطل ويجر على التعليم أسأل الله لنا وله الإخلاص والقبول يا رب So, as the brother mentioned, may Allah bless him, that his wudu isn't correct. It's invalid, it's not accepted. Why? Because of two reasons. Number one, we mentioned that from the conditions of the ablution of the wudu, is that each body part, each limb is washed continuously, such that 
when he reaches the next limb, the first limb doesn't become dry. And as you can see from the brother, his face is dry and now he's washing his, his feet. And therefore his, his uh, wudu isn't correct. The second reason why the ablution isn't correct and it's invalid is because his intention. He didn't make the intention that he was performing wudu. Rather his intention was that he was teaching the people. So therefore, his wudu isn't correct. However, his intention and his act of teaching the people, this is what he's voted on. And we ask Allah for sincerity and they accept the swamas. The description of performing a tayammum. A tayammum yakun. A tayammum is is due to a lack of water. Aw wujud ma lakin la yaqdir al istimal al ma. Or if the water is present, however, he's not able to use the water. Bad shadid. Or, for example, due to severe cold. Aw ladayhi mathalan marad. Or, for example, he is ill and therefore can't use the water. Humma mathalan. For example, he has a fever. Right. Kaif yatiyam. And how does, a, how does a person perform a tiyammum? He makes an intention بقلبه. in his heart ولا and he doesn't say upon his tongue and then he, he mentions the name of Allah Bismillah and then he places the palm, his palms either inside of his hands onto the ground once he places his hands once on the on the ground of the earth. <laughs> Whether that is sand, or tin, or clay, with or or small stones, or small pebbles, or or a large stone, a rock or a boulder. Just once, once he places his hands on that, on those things. And then he wipes over that which is pan from his face without separating the strands of his beard. And then the top of his right hand and then the top of his left hand. So he makes an intention. He says Bismillah, he mentions the name of Allah. He hits those things, the ground or the dust or the soil. Uh, one time and then he wipes over his face and then the top of his right hand and the top of his left hand without separating between the fingers just wipe over once so the only thing that, that's left now is the way the description of forming ghusl and even though the time place come just be patient for sure why so there's two types of ghusl a ghusl which is sufficient and or a ghusl which is the most perfect and complete so the most perfect way and the most complete way of performing ghusl is like the way of the Prophet And this is recommended and is higher in degree than that which is just sufficient, the minimum amount of ghusl. <laughs> So, what is sufficient in terms of the minimum amount of ghusl that you have to do? And yanwi biqalbi. That you have an intention in your heart. Thumma yusammi. And then you say Bismillah, you mention the name of Allah. Wa yu'ammim jami' al-badam bil-ma. And then he covers all of his body in, in water. He water reaches all the parts of his body. Wa ma tahta al-shu'ur al-khafifa wal-kathifa. And he tahaqqaq min dukhul al-ma ila asl, usul al-ma ila asl al-bashara. And he also makes sure that the water, it reaches all the parts of his body, meaning even his skin under his hair and his beard, make sure that the uh, water reaches the, reaches the skin. And this includes madmada, rinsing your mouth and rinsing your nostrils or your nose. So, a person makes an intention, 
He mentions the name of Allah by saying Bismillah. يعمم جميع البدن بالماء وما تحت الشعور الخفيف والكثيفة. He makes sure that water has reached every single part of his body, including that which is the skin which is under the hair, whether it's light or whether it's heavy. Where you got a lot of hair, little amount of hair, make sure the water reaches it. مع المغرب والاستنشاق. And this includes rinsing the mouth and استنشاق, rinsing the nose and nostrils. طيب على اغتسال المستحب أعلى اغتسال اغتسال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. And now the most complete. And recommended and perfect way of performing iqtisal al-ghusl, either ghusl of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. يغسل أولا الفرجين. The first thing is he washes his private parts. ثم يغسل اليدين إذا كان يعني في الفرجين شيء من الأوساخ وكذا بالصابون. And then, if there was some dirt in his private parts, then he washes his hands with soap. أو بأي شيء من المنظفات سواء الصابون أو غير الصابون. أو أي شيء that will remove those impurities, anything that you need to wipe, any type of liquid, anything that will remove the impurities. ثم يبدأ يتوضأ وضوء للصلاة. And then he performs his ablution, the wudu that he would make for the prayer, his normal wudu. يتمضمض ويستنشق ويستنثر ويغسل الوجه مع التخليل هنا لللحية خفيفة وكثيفة. يغسل اليد اليمنى. So now, for example, he, uh, washing uh, his hands, his face. Also separating the strands of his beard and his hair for you know he runs the water there. Watching the right hand, the left, the right arm, the left arm. والرأس هنا يكون غسل لامس حتى يتحقق وصول الماء إلى أصل البشر. And now here, when it comes to wiping the head, he doesn't wipe the head. He makes sure he washes the head. So he makes sure the water reaches his head, the skin beneath his head. فإذا انتهى من الرأس مع الأذنين. So if he has finished washing his head and the ears. يبقى هنا في الوضوء غسل الرجلين. The only thing that's now left from the ablution is washing his feet. لا يغسل الرجلين. But he doesn't wash his feet. يغسل الشق الأيمن كاملة. He now washes the right side of his body, all of it. الشق الأيمن كاملة. ثم الشق الأيسر. And then the left hand side of his body. ثم يغسل الرجلين. And then he washes his feet. مرة أخرى. So another time. يغسل الفرجين. Number one, he washes his private parts. توضأ وضع للصلاة. and then after cleaning his hands, if there's any impurities, he makes his ablution for the prayer like he does for the prayer. وبعد أن انتهى من رأسه. but he washes his head and if he's finished, once he's finished washing his head. غسل لمس. I washing and not wiping over like in normal wudu. يغسل الشق الأيمن كاملا. and then he washes or he runs water over the right side of his body. ثم الأيسر كاملا. and then the left side of the body, all of the left side. ثم يغسل الرجل. and then he washes his feet. إذا اقتسل هذا الغسل سواء كان الغسل المستحب أو المجزئ يصح أن يصلي فيه مع أنه في الاقتسال المجزئ لم يتوضع لكن الاقتسال أعلى من الوضوء. So if a person has done this type of غسل either غسل which is recommended and is the complete perfect غسل which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to do then he can perform any prayer and he can do any action action of worship. If however a person doesn't perform this perfect, complete recommended uh, ghusl. However, he makes the minimum amount of ghusl mean that water reaches all of his parts of the body. Then still he can do any prayer. Even though he hasn't performed ablution, but the minimum level of ghusl, it covers and it's more than the ablution. <laughs>